have an exciting hearing today on NASA's efforts to save the world, literally. That was how it began, a routine congressional hearing, until it was. The discovery wasn't supposed to reach Capitol Hill. It wasn't supposed to leave NASA's internal network. But when the data from 3i Atlas, an interstellar object first spotted by the Atlas telescope in Hawaii, showed an unprecedented surge of heat, electromagnetic interference, and what looked like a controlled energy pulse, everything stopped. Within hours, NASA servers went offline, security clearances were locked, and Congress called an emergency midnight session. Behind closed doors, scientists presented findings they could barely comprehend data that suggested the impossible. A comet that wasn't cooling, but activating. It was close to midnight when senators and military staff filed into a secure underground auditorium beneath the Capitol, a classified hearing known only to a handful of officials. Phones, aides, and press were banned. Every name was logged, every document tagged and sealed. At the front stood Dr. Alina Navarro, NASA's deputy administrator for science, flanked by two men in civilian suits, one from the Pentagon's Office of Space Intelligence, another from the National Reconnaissance Office. The first slide looked ordinary, a spectral graph, but the numbers behind it told a story no one was ready to hear. Over the past 72 hours, 3i Atlas had begun emitting heat signatures far beyond what any natural body should produce. Infrared sensors from the Deep Space Network recorded surface temperatures exceeding 5,000 degrees C, hotter than the surface of Mercury. And then came the detail that made the room fall silent. The heat wasn't random. It pulsed every nine hours precisely. Each cycle was identical. Each pulse perfectly timed. This wasn't chaos, this was control. Imagery from China's Tianwen-1 orbiter, orbiting near Mars, had captured something unexpected. In less than two days, 3i Atlas transitioned from pale green luminescence to a deep blood-red hue. Spectroscopic readings revealed narrow, coherent emission lines, not the broad, messy spectrum of reflected sunlight. Coherent light means one thing, laser-like emission, something generating light in phase, like a machine, not scattering it like dust. For context, no natural comet in recorded history has ever emitted monochromatic light, not even Amuamu or Borisov. By the time the lights came back on, the congressional mood had shifted. The hearing wasn't about a weird comet anymore. The conversation had turned towards something that might be built, not born. The next report began with a time lapse, 12 hour composite infrared frames. At first, 3i Atlas was dim, barely visible. Then, in a single rotation, it flared like an ember being stoked, its core igniting crimson against the void. Each rotation brought another surge. Temperature rose and fell with precision, as if following a mechanical rhythm, like an engine throttling. NASA verified the phenomenon with James Webb Space Telescope Infrared Imagery, Deep Space Network Radiometric Data, Tianwen-1 spectral analysis near Mars. All three systems confirmed identical readings, a synchronized pulse every nine hours and four minutes. Then came the slide that made even military staff lean forward. At 4.26 microns, the emission spectrum matched ionized CO2 plasma, a form produced only under extreme high-energy propulsion environments. On Earth, those conditions exist only in fusion experiments and advanced plasma engines. Natural comets don't generate pure plasma lines. They vent irregularly. They shed dust and gas unpredictably. 3i Atlas didn't. It oscillated regularly, predictably, intentionally. The conclusion was chillingly simple. It wasn't warming up. It was charging. When the James Webb Telescope refocused on 3i Atlas, its mid-infrared instruments captured a new anomaly, nickel vapor and ionized cobalt, glowing at over 3, 0, 0, 0 degrees C. Those metals shouldn't exist in vapor form at its distance from the sun, not unless they were being heated from within. Even more unsettling, the spectral lines were clean, no diffusion, no randomness, no chaotic outgassing. It looked like metal being heated in a containment chamber. When modeled, the emission curves matched known parameters for electromagnetic propulsion exhaust, 
similar to experimental VASIMR ion drives. Each thermal pulse aligned with a spike in metallic vapor. Rise peak cooled on repeat, nine hours every time. It no longer resembled cometary chemistry. It resembled engineering. Then came the magnetometer data. During each pulse, the deep space network detected structured magnetic distortions rippling outward. Not random solar interference, but an organized field forming a perfect envelope around the object. It rotated in sync with three I atlases spin, forming a magnetic cocoon thousands of kilometers wide. To produce such a field naturally, the body would need a molten metallic core and a perfect rotational conductor, impossible for something so small and cold. Simulations revealed a possible explanation, an electromagnetic confinement field, similar to magnetic bottles used to stabilize fusion plasma. To NASA engineers, it looked eerily familiar. To the Pentagon observers, it looked strategic. Some called it a shield, others whispered, a drive field. What came next defied all physics. Telemetry from NASA, ESA's Gaia, and China's Tianwen one showed that 3i Atlas wasn't shedding mass like normal comets. It was gaining it. Dust and charged particles near its vicinity slowed down, curving inward toward the object. The phenomenon resembled electromagnetic capture, the process by which plasma thrusters absorb nearby ionized gas as fuel. Each pulse of light coincided with a measurable increase in density. It was feeding, converting matter into energy a comet that sustains itself, and maybe moves itself. By late November, 3i Atlas approached Jupiter's gravity well, and every observatory on Earth was watching. Under Newtonian mechanics, Jupiter's immense gravity should have pulled it in, bending its trajectory. Instead, 3i Atlas corrected. Telemetry captured a 1.03 km s velocity change, exactly opposite to Jupiter's pull. Infrared images showed a brilliant thermal flare, a massive plasma jet, ejected at a perfect 90-degree angle from its flight path. The trajectory flattened, as if the object was performing an orbital correction. It wasn't captured. It wasn't deflected. It navigated. Every scientist in the room knew what that implied. Objects don't decide to correct course. Pilots do. The lights in the auditorium dimmed. The science portion was over. Now came containment. Officials from the Department of Defense, Space Force, and Homeland Security stepped forward. Their directive was short and cold. Limit information flow. Reclassify all telemetry. Prevent public panic. A new term appeared on the projector. Interstellar Object Containment Protocol. Effective immediately. All 3i Atlas data was classified. NASA's live feeds were delayed. Deep Space Network logs encrypted. International collaborations paused under security review. Because if this object truly had control, it meant intelligence. And if the public knew that, panic would be inevitable. The silence lasted seven days. Then came the leak. At 2, 13 a.m. UTC, a compressed data packet appeared on encrypted astronomy forums. File name, JOV Shift 3i Atlas Bin. Within hours, astrophysicists in Germany, Chile, and Japan authenticated the telemetry. It wasn't fake. The images showed the unthinkable. 3i Atlas holding position against Jupiter's gravity, emitting rhythmic thermal pulses that matched an internal power cycle. Attempts to suppress the leak failed immediately. By sunrise, headlines read, NASA caught hiding evidence of artificial object near Jupiter. NASA denied it, calling it a sensor anomaly. But identical data mirrored in Chinese and European archives proved otherwise. Public telescopes picked up faint infrared oscillations at the same coordinates. The object was real, and it was active. On December 18, 2025, at 04, 12 UTC, the Deep Space Network received one last signal. At first, it looked like static, but when analysts filtered the noise, they uncovered a repeating pattern, the same nine-hour pulse, now compressed into a single continuous surge. Then the signal split three pulses, nested fractally, folding inward like a digital spiral. For 14 seconds, the waveform stabilized. And at that precise moment, optical observatories across the Terminator line recorded a faint flash, a burst of light from the object's position beyond Jupiter. Then nothing. 
No debris, no afterglow, no object, just silence. NASA's final internal memo contained a single line. Object ceased emission and departed observable field under unknown propulsion. Hours later, the National Security Council ordered all tracking suspended. The Congressional Task Force dissolved. Publicly, NASA labeled the event a data artifact. Privately, researchers analyzed the final transmission. When visualized as a spectrogram, the waveform formed a chilling shape, concentric arc spiraling toward a hollow center. It was the same pattern seen in its magnetic field weeks earlier. They called it the reset signal. Whether 3i Atlas was a natural phenomenon or a machine beyond comprehension, one truth remains. It changed everything we thought we knew about the universe. A comet that ignited instead of decaying. A magnetic envelope that behaved like a heartbeat. And a final transmission that might not have been a farewell, but an invitation. Maybe it wasn't observing us. Maybe it was measuring us. And when it was done, it moved on. Because now, after the blackout, the leaks, and the final pulse, one question echoes through every lab and every observatory on Earth. If 3i Atlas truly left, where did it go? And even more chilling, will it come back?